I'm presenting on behalf of a large cohort of authors and trialists, the Target Trialist Group. The scientific rationale for Target comes paradoxically from a pathological analysis of mastectomy specimens in which we found that breast cancer is frequently multicentric, but most recurrences occur near the primary tumor, just as they might, and very few in the other quadrants as they would occur in the other breast. So we felt it would make sense to give radiotherapy only to the area around the primary tumor. We collaborated with industry and developed a technique called targeted intraoperative radiotherapy, which is in short called target. It uses a mobile machine used in a standard operating room, delivering physical dose of 20 gray at the tumor bed surface over 20, about 25 minutes. The first case was performed in UCL on 2nd of July, 1998. The technique uses a miniature electron generator and accelerator, which accelerates electrons along a 3.2 millimeter tube, which strike a gold target to generate X-rays, which are modulated by a spherical applicator placed within the breast to give a uniform dose of radiation to the tissues at highest risk, such that the dose corresponds to the tumor cell density. Some translational work appears to support what we're trying to do. When you operate, you find the wound fluid collects in the breast wound. And this wound fluid stimulates proliferation, motility, and invasiveness of cancer cells in the laboratory. And what we found is that if you take wound fluid from patients who have received target, this stimulation is abrogated. Therefore, we felt that target might be creating an environment, a microenvironment that is not particularly conducive to tumor cell growth. Therefore, perhaps improving what we might, its efficacy compared to what the dose that we are going to give. So the target A trial included patients over the age of 45 with unifocal invasive duct carcinoma, but with no MRI that was required. Only 6% of patients in the trial had MRI performed. The size, we said, should be preferably less than 3.5 centimeters, and patients were randomized to two policies. Let me reiterate, there were two policies comparing the standard policy of fractionated external beam radiotherapy as per local policies, and the second policy was the risk-adapted radiotherapy giving single-dose targeted intraoperative radiotherapy with intrabeam, and if postoperatively high risk factors were found, there was a facility and a strong recommendation in the protocol to add external beam radiotherapy. We expected this to happen in about 15% of patients, and in reality, we got to 15%. Between 2000 and 2012, 3,451 patients were randomized from 33 centers in 10 countries. The trial started in Europe, but it was very much an international trial with participation from Australia and North America. The patients, although the criteria for entry were wide, the patients who actually entered the trial were good prognosis patients. However, they were not just elderly patients. We had over 1,200 patients who were younger than 60, and there was a substantial number of adverse prognosis patients in the trial. For example, there were over 500 patients who were node positive. The maturity of the trial can be assessed with these figures. We have in the trial 1,222 patients with a median follow-up of five years, over 2,000 patients with a median follow-up of four years. The completeness of follow-up, you can see from the bottom half, the red line is the expected follow-up, and the blue line is what the actual follow-up is, showing that they are very close to each other. And 94, nearly 94% of patients were seen in the previous, were seen for at least five years or in the preceding year. These are the outcome measures I'm going to show. The primary outcome was ipsilateral breast recurrence with a predefined non-inferiority margin of 2.5% absolute difference in local recurrence. The secondary outcome were included death, which is what I'll present today, and the cause of death being breast cancer or not breast cancer death. We also explored 
loco regional recurrence, all recurrences that includes breast, axillary, contralateral, and distant recurrence, although this was not our primary endpoint, and also distant recurrence. So the next slide is the main is an analysis, is, to, is the method to show how we defined pre, pre-specified subgroups in terms of timing of randomization and target delivery and PGR status as a predictor of radiation sensitivity. So we subgroup patients according to timing of randomization. If randomization occurred before lumpectomy, they were called pre-pathology or concurrent target. And if when timing occurred after, randomization occurred after lumpectomy, and they, they had target delivered as a subsequent second procedure. We subgroup patients according to the PGR status as a surrogate for hormone sensitivity because the Oxford overview suggested that radiotherapy appears to be more effective in hormone-sensitive tumors. So in these graphs, the red bar shows the recurrence without radiotherapy, and the reduction in radiotherapy is seen by the light pink bar. And as you can see, in the lower graphs, which are hormone-sensitive tumors, the reduction is significantly more proportionately compared to ER-negative tumors, or hormone-receptor-negative tumors, where effect of radiotherapy appears to be small. As we had very few patients who were ER-negative, only 7% in the trial, we felt we we could use PGR status as a surrogate for radiation sensitivity, and we we decided this before the trial was unblinded for this analysis. So ER-negative patients include ER-negative, PR-negative, ER-positive, PR-negative, and any HER2 PR-negative. So we had four predisposed subgroups according to timing of randomization in the vertically and according to PGR status or radiation sensitivity horizontally, with the largest subgroup being 1,625 patients. These are the main results. And please concentrate on the color of the lines. Blue line is target, red line randomized to EBRT. Above is the primary endpoint of local recurrence. You can see there is a difference of 2% between target and EBRT. But the lines are reversed in the bottom graph of deaths. There are many more deaths than local recurrences. And we can see the target patients had lower mortality than EBRT, reaching a level of significance just about 0.09, with a hazard ratio of 0.7. Now, I will drill down this result according to the subgroups, firstly for the primary outcome and then the secondary outcome. In terms of the primary outcome, we explored whether this difference made a difference in local regional recurrence. You can see that the local regional recurrence is mainly difference is driven by the ipsilateral breast recurrence, and it is not seen in the largest subgroup of pre-pathology PGR positive cases. Similarly, all recurrence difference is also driven by the difference in ipsilateral breast recurrence, and there is no difference in the largest subgroup of pre-pathology PGR positive patients. Thankfully, we have found no difference in distant recurrence in the whole trial, or none at all in the pre-pathology PGR positive cases. In terms of the ipsilateral breast recurrence, the primary endpoint, we found that most of the difference arose in the post-pathology when target was given as a second procedure or those who were progesterone receptor negative patients who were less sensitive to radiation, so the smaller dose may not have been enough. And in the largest subgroup of 1,625 patients, if you see, there is no difference at all in the ipsilateral breast recurrence with a difference of 0.18 with a confidence interval straddling zero. And in terms of death, there was an absolute difference of 3.1% reduced total number of deaths with a borderline level of significance of 0.08, a 3.1% absolute difference with a hazard ratio of 0.6 and a p-value of 0.08. In order to drill down what the cause of this reduced mortality in target is, we looked at the deaths. There were 88 deaths, 36 of them were from breast cancer, and there was no difference at all between the two groups in terms of breast cancer deaths. But in terms of non-breast cancer deaths, we found a highly statistically significant reduction in mortality 
in patients who were randomized to target. And that this difference was quite large, and we wanted to find out why this difference was present. So we had independent assessment of cause of death by somebody, a senior clinician, who did not participate in the trial or did not know the randomization. And what we found is that the non-breast cancer death difference was driven by hugely reduced cardiovascular events and deaths from other cancers, with a hazard ratio of difference between 0.47 with a p-value of 0.0086, and a difference of between 1.4% to 3.5%. So in conclusion, in terms of the primary endpoint, the absolute difference in ipsilateral breast recurrence between target and EBRT for the whole trial, unselected, is 2%. And for pre-pathology PGR positive, the largest subgroup, it is 0.18%. In terms of the secondary endpoint of death, compared to target, compared to EBRT, target, we found results in significantly fewer non-breast cancer deaths, leading to a trend in reduced overall mortality. So how should one select patients for target? I would say cautiously. Patients should have all the fulfilled criteria for entry into the target A trial. And currently, we feel our preferred option is to use target at the time of lumpectomy concurrently and choose PGR-positive patients. We must add external beam radiotherapy if adverse prognostic factors are present in about 15 to 20% of patients. We believe that these new data will significantly improve the choice and for patients and their clinicians to improve their individualization of local treatment for breast cancer. Acknowledgements are due to all the centers, all the investigators, and all patients and their families who participated in the trial. Thank you very much.